All right, guys, we got a bit of a twofer here because there's two articles that I want to go over in this video. I'm probably going to title it something like The Patriarchy Strikes Back. Um, Dave Chappelle, in his stand-up, said, there is no lasting change that can be made through fear. And, well, here's that other foot dropping. Here's the, here's the, here's the comeback. For every action, there's a reaction, and the reaction is upon us. This is coming to us from CNN World. Men are suing women who accuse them of harassment. Will it stop others from speaking out? This was written by Kara Fox and Antoine Crowley. You can see there's definitely all that Me Too stuff. A series of high-profile defamation cases have been brought against women in response to the outpouring of sexual misconduct allegations in the wake of the Me Too and I said the Me Too of Me Too. And women's rights activists say they could have a chilling effect on the movement's future. Last week, Sandra Muller, the woman who started France's version of Me Too, appeared in a Paris court where she faced a defamation lawsuit brought by the man she accused of making lewd comments about her. In October 2017, just days before the Me Too hashtag went viral in the wake of allegations made against disgrace from producer Harvey Weinstein, Muller, a French journalist, shared her own story on Twitter using the hashtag Balaston Pork which roughly translates to squeal on your pig. Muller alleged that Eric Bryan, a senior French television producer, had humiliated her by saying, you have big breasts, you are my type of woman, I will make you orgasm all night. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I've read that like several times, there's no way, I, like every time, every time I go into that voice, it is just, <laughs> I can make, cause I, like, it sounds like he's trying mad. I, he's trying to get at her, like, yo, what's happening? <laughs> That's what he was trying to do. I mean, if she felt embarrassed, if she felt humiliated, darling, sorry. But this this just feels like he was trying, she was trying mad. And let's get into more of the story. You, you'll see where I'm coming from with this. Her story soon inspired thousands of others to share their experiences of sexual harassment and assault. Catapulting France's national discourse on sexualized violence into the global spotlight. Published by the French late daily Le Monde in December 2017, Brian admitted he made those comments to Muller, saying that he had made inappropriate remarks to her very late at night during a drink fueled cocktail party evening. But I did it only once. You see, like, that's where, like, because I, I said I read this article. <laughs> like, every time I hear it, I can just kind of hear him, like, yeah, just trying to G Mac on it. In court last Wednesday, Brian once again admitted that he said those words to Mueller, adding that he had sent her an apology text message, but didn't get an answer the following day. He added that Mueller's violence against me has never stopped. The violence of people hiding behind their phones. So, yeah, so apparently, she, yeah, she never responded to him. She never replied, but she just went and took it straight to the Internet. <clears throat> While he has said that he regretted his words, Brian noted in Le Monde that he would have rather been tried in a court of justice than the court of social media. And that's exactly what he's done. A gray zone. In January 2018, Brian announced he would sue Mueller for defamation, asking for 50,000 pounds in damages and 10,000 pounds worth of legal fees. While Brian admitted he had made inappropriate comments to Mueller, his lawyer, Marie Marie B. told CNN the reason they filed a defamation suit was because Mueller had accused him of sexual harassment at work on Twitter. This is defamatory because we can't blame a man for making himself guilty of an offense when that's absolutely not the case, Marie B. said. Mueller, who had recently been honored as a silence breaker and person of the year by Time magazine, said at the time that she was surprised by Brian's change of strategy. Writing on her Facebook page, Mueller said, The Balance Tone Polk movement has inspired victims to speak out and has shed, a, has shed light on a real social problem that is such a taboo. Okay, yeah, let me I'll stop you right there, darling. See, in order, to, you got to establish the fact that you're a victim. You know, I mean, until then, you're just you're an accuser. You're not a victim yet. I believe victim status needs to be affirmed. That's what the court of laws are for. With this summons, however, they want to force me to shut up. I, I, I really don't think so. <laughs> Vowing to fight this until the end, Mueller said she hoped that the trial will be an opportunity to hold a real debate on the ways to combat sexual harassment, but you weren't sexually harassed. That's the thing. You are. Like, he just hit on you once. 
That's it. That's not harassment. He shot his shot. Like, do you not know the difference between harassment and shooting your shot? Jeez. But Selene Peaks? Peaks? I'm just going to call it Peaks. Spokesperson for the French Feminist Association, yeah, Dare Feminism, told CNN that the trial is absurd and one that amplifies the culture and what the courts are trying to make us believe there is a gray zone between harassment and seduction. But the deal is, is that there is no gray zone. You're 100% correct. Him sitting there saying, hey, you know, I mean, but is that very inappropriate to say to a co-worker? Yes. But I mean, if you feel like you got to oh, like Jordan Peterson caught a lot of crap for saying, oh, I don't I'm like we haven't established that men and women can work together yet because, you know, it, it's just it really is when you spend like time with someone and you spend like, you know, it's particularly time in a confined space with someone. Chemistry is chemistry. And, and it really it's really like just blown the family unit just completely to hell and that's not me saying women shouldn't be in the full workforce anything else like that all i'm saying is that this is a a, it really is such a like male female interactions are so sensitive and so nuanced that you know if he only got shot a shot once and didn't do it again then I, I believe harassment dictates a pattern of behavior and he got drunk once and it then even sent you an apology text. Come on. Come on. If you if you ain't want him to get at you, you ain't want him to get at you. You turn him down and you apparently turned him down. So it should be all good. Women already face immense challenges in speaking out against sexual harassment and gender based violence. Uh, gender is not real for several reasons, Pikes added, including the fear of losing their job or other forms of retaliation. The threat of defamation only compounds that fear. France's judicial system already already doesn't respond to the testimonies of women, Pike said, adding that even in the wake of Me Too, only a fraction of women who have been raped brought their case to the police. Well, why is that, huh? Because maybe it, not all those women were saying, like, you know, like, it's like the same thing with uh this, this Mueller lady. You're not all sitting here saying things that are, like, you know, prison worthy. You're just sitting there saying, oh, I felt her out. Like, and uh, it's, it's, it's more of an attention grab than anything else. And while Mueller and, you know, these ladies have CNN reaching out to them for comments and wanting to know their stories and stuff like that. Yeah, they go and keep the rules up for as long as they as long as they can. I mean, the rules of of being like uh, of being um, harassed, because honestly, like it's a 50 50 shot, whether and this is male or female, whether you can um, what's the name you can um, you you the person's into it. It's just a 50 50 shot. You can either get a yes or a no. The latest available figures from the French Ministry of Social Affairs, Health and Women's Rights show an average of 84,000 women become victims of forced entry or attempts of forced entry every year. Less than 40 percent of estimated sexual violence cases were registered with police from November 2014 to October 2015, with only 771 people convicted of the crime in 2014. French journalist Lauren Bastide and spokesperson for the feminist movement, Let's Take the Front Page, told CNN that social norms still inform the judicial process in France. Women are asked how they were dressed before the accused gets asked any questions, she said, ex she said, explaining that critics of the feminist movement are dangerously conflating sexual assault and rape with the French tradition of flirting or seduction. Justice is sexist in the image of society, Peaks added. She attributes backlash to the Me Too movement to men who are not ready to give up their privileges in society. But that's the thing. You can't take our privileges in society because we're men. Like, like, I'm telling you, this gender nonsense is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> we're different beings, okay? I mean, is and I hate to go to the religious route on this, but it's just a thing called God's order. God's order is God, man, woman, child. It's worked that way. No matter what you believe in, you believe in Moses, you believe in Buddha, you believe in uh, Ganesh, you believe in whatever, Allah. You know, Allah's order, Ganesh's order. Buddha's order. It all kind of just goes, yeah, man, God, God, deity, 
man, woman, child. You know, like, and you guys are just so off the rocker with this. But Steed also said that economic factors play a role in assault cases, of course, with women from working class or poorer backgrounds less likely to report their abuser because they can be sued. Unfortunately, there are spaces where you can express yourself, but it is extremely paradoxical. Twitter is a wonderful tool, but it also is the most violent tool that can turn against us. Okay, why do I keep using the word violent? There are words. It, it, it's Twitter. Twitter is not. Oh my goodness. Words aren't violence. Jesus. Precision strike. Brian, however, seems to believe he is a casualty of the Me Too movement, saying in court last Wednesday that he is the victim of the precision strike by Mueller. It's kind of hard to argue. In suing for her for defamation, Brian joins a list of wealthy men in powerful positions who have taken legal action against their accusers. Right on, brothers. Last month, Oscar winning actor Joffrey Rush was awarded $2.9 million, Australian dollars, so that's approximately $2 million in American, apparently, after winning his defamation case against a journalist in Sydney newspaper, The Daily Telegraph. The Australian newspaper reported that Rush had inappropriately touched his King Lear co-star Erin Jean Norvell on her breast and back, followed her to a bathroom, and sent her an inappropriate text message during the show's production in Sydney. Between 2015 and 2016, Rush denied all the accusations. Norvell had made the, allegu- had made the allegations in a private workplace complaint, but later agreed to testify on the, for the paper. She continues to maintain that her claims are true, but yeah, you lost though. But that's the thing, you lost. I mean, there there was, there, you lost. <sighs> In a series of interviews with Australia's ABC News and the New York Times, actress Yale Stone, okay, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, they're talking about um, India, they're, they're going all over, the, all over the globe at this point, and that's why we're going to this other article. What's going on here in the good old US of A, huh? <laughs> this is coming to us from the daily wire how long is this video but okay so let, let's this is actually a relatively short video if you're still in here thank you for putting up with me guys all right so alabama bill uh, <laughs> alabama bill aims to punish false accusations of race media cries foul by ash show and she i think i've read her articles before uh, cute little brunette the article has been updated to include comments from rep drake that's just all okay. In the age of Me Too, we're supposed to believe all women when they make accusations of a sexual nature. But as I have shown time and time and time and time again, that is simply not true. Even when an accusation is proven to be false via text or video evidence, the false accuser faces little to no consequences. Certainly far fewer consequences than the person falsely accused faces. Alabama State Rep E. Richard Dickey Drake... <laughs> is trying to change that. Earlier this month, Drake introduced a LHB 544, a bill that would punish false accusations of fault of sexual crime. As it stands, false accusers are only charged with filing a false police report, a misdemeanor. Drake's bill would make it a C-class felony to willfully, knowfully, knowingly, and uh, with malicious t- intent f- make a false report of forced entry in the first degree sodomy in the third in the first degree or sexual torture the allegations would need to be proven false in order for the accuser to be punished the bill also makes it a class a misdemeanor to willfully knowingly and with malicious intent make a false report of forced entry in the second degree sodomy in the second degree sexual misconduct sexual abuse in the first degree sexual abuse in the second degree indecent exposure enticing child to enter vehicle house etc for immoral purposes sexual abuse of a child under 12 or foster parent engaging in a sex act etc with a foster child again the allegations would need to be proven untrue in addition to the penalties for such felonies and misdemeanors, Class C felonies can result in 1 to 10 years in prison, and Class A misdemeanors can result in up to 1 year in prison. Those making false accusations may be liable for the legal fees of the falsely accused. 
AL.com reported that Drake decided to introduce the bill after his friend's ex-wife falsely accused him of sexual abuse. If they make an accusation, they better make sure it's true and make them think twice before they make a false accusation, Drake told the outlet. Media outlets are, of course, reporting this bill by claiming it would hurt victims of sexual assault. Al.com claimed it <clears throat> claimed that if the accused is found not guilty, the accuser would be responsible for paying the accused person's legal expenses. The outlet also spoke to the director of Alabama Coalition Against Forced Entry, who said this bill would be would keep victims from coming forward. Yeah, everything keeps the victims come from coming forward, isn't it? Okay, yeah, so I've been running my mouth within this um article long enough this is uh this is good this is a this is a good thing this is very fair particularly and and shout out to alabama for doing it uh, because guys guys you just can't take people's words for things okay like there has to be evidence there has to be what's name and if you sit there and you're gonna and you're gonna put someone through the ringer like that because that is a life destroying accusation my father went through one so i'm very well aware yeah man nah Nah, it's not solving a new problem, she said. It's it is a problem if someone makes a false report and that's see, why do they always say it's rare? Like, <laughs> how do you know? How do you know? Come on. It's an effort to silence men and women who are coming forward about sexual assault. It's an effort to make them afraid to come forward. MSNBC suffered a similar freak out. How.com then repeated the misleading statistic that just 2% of 10% of, accusa of accusations are false. As I have written several times previously, the statistic only applies to accusations that are proven false. Since it's difficult to prove a negative, this is a rare occurrence. The remaining 90% of to 98% are not true. However, in fact, just 3% to 5% go to trial and result in a guilty finding. So using the same logic used to claim few accusations are false, one could claim that 3 to 5% of are true. Everything in between is questionable. There are reports that are baseless or wrongly reported that are the lack that lack evidence for an arrest. There are reports that re that don't result in a trial, dismissed or pleaded, and those that go to trial but are found not guilty. <clears throat> In a phone conversation, Drake told the Daily Wire that his bill would not punish accusers just because the accused was found not guilty. Just because you accuse someone and they're found not guilty doesn't mean you will be charged and pay legal fees, he said, adding that that not guilty finding may simply mean there wasn't enough evidence to convict, not that there was enough evidence to suggest that the accusation was false. He added that, as the Wire reported, a person would only be charged if their accusation was proven false and made willingly knowingly and with malicious intent it's going to be hard to prove that man i know that but i know there are cases where proven untrue he they pray cases that were proven untrue he told the wire that little piece right there kind of knocked me off as examples he listed scottsboro everything else like that yeah, uh, it's yeah. So we're at the end of the article anyway. As examples, he listed the Scottsboro Boys. He's from Alabama, after all. The Duke Lacrosse rape hoax, forced entry, and Brian Banks. Despite the media's false reporting, Drake's bill ha is not about keeping victims from coming forward. I want victims to come forward with sexual allegations. He said, "I'm just trying to stop the false accusations that ruin lives." And that is the end of the article. And you know what? Hats off. That's off USA, USA. <laughs> because geez, all right. So I think how long is this video? Oh man, we going off to on, on, almost twenty minutes. So here's the deal, guys. False accusations happen. We can't tell. You know, it's very hard to prove a negative. You know, and so thusly having that, just having the charge there, will act as a deterrent. You know, I mean, who knows? Like, <laughs> the application of the law and the law itself are two different things. I hope you guys realize that. The application of the law and, you know, like, how it's carried out, how it's um intended, how it's moved. It's just, it's like, it's like anything else that's given. Take that $100 million that um Zuckerberg gave Nork, right? Like, it was doled out to lawyers and consultants and stuff like that. So, guess what? Who didn't get the money? The people that needed it. And that's that's basically with any nonprofit, any grant, any program when it comes to urban America. And really, this is no different. Let me, let me get this someplace. 
There you go. But really, this is no different. You got accusations that, you know, should that that end up destroying people's lives, harming people. And to not have any consequences for putting someone's life through that. Yeah, that has to stop. Look, we are all this country, man, as men in Western society, we are raised to love our women. We we're raised to place them on this pedestal. And honestly, most of them don't deserve it. Let's be real. <laughs> like, particularly if you're a complete stranger that I don't know. Like, I, I'm willing to do things off of just GP. But at the same time, you know, like, come on. Come on. Take it easy there, champ. It's not just because, oh, yeah, yeah, check. You feel like, yeah, you can do whatever. Nah, take it easy. And But we're wired differently. We're completely different animals, men and women. We are completely different animals. And it's time that we got back to respecting that fact. You know, is that the freaking security? It's time we got back to respecting that fact. So with that being said, bringing this one to an end. If you liked it, like it. If you dislike it, by all means, you know, I ain't scared. Uh, sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice. Share because sharing is caring. And, you know, let me know. What do you think in the comments? Is Do you feel like, oh, my goodness, we should just listen and believe? Or do you believe that there should be consequences for false accusations? Because that's definitely where I land. Until the next one.